the cinemas, Spotify, wherever you get your content, we're going to find a chunk of it, we're going to watch it, and we're going to talk about it. At the moment, we're working our way through the sort of Marvel shows and Invincible and a few other odds and ends that we've been watching on a week-to-week basis. Given the nature of the conversations that we have, this show is fairly spoiler-heavy. So if you haven't watched The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if you haven't watched Invincible, maybe go and watch those shows first, come back and join the conversation. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to the podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter. Um, all of our socials are at The Endless Cast. So give us a follow on one of those or maybe subscribe to the podcast. That would be great. This week, there was a little bit of an interruption. I had to leave towards the end of the podcast as my father, who is housebound, was receiving his second COVID vaccination. And they don't really tell you when that's going to happen. You just kind of get a phone call from an ambulance driver 10 minutes beforehand. Um, so he's fully vaccinated now, which is great, but I missed the last 10 minutes of the podcast. I think you'll survive without me. Brian and Kevin did a fine job. All that being said, let's jump into the conversation. So we're going to be talking about The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Invincible as usual. We're, we're watching those shows progress and I think we're all enjoying them. Not so much. I'd just like to start us off with... <laughs> ooh, okay, we'll come back to that. I want to start us off talking about some of the the news or the things that popped up during the week. So I've been watching Stanley Tucci's CNN show where he goes traveling around Italy. I'm learning a lot about Italy. I'm learning that you can look very stylish with a bald head and some thick rimmed glasses. You kind of have to be very handsome like he is, though, I think, to put it off. Now, Aiden, Aiden, he's implying that you're not handsome enough like that. That was that was implied in, in, in that right there. And I don't know if he meant to imply that, but that's... It's heavily implied. Do, do you know what I see happening right now? Like as I see both your faces on my screen, I can see that he's going. That's my look. If I want it in ten years or twenty years, not yours. So you better back off because he's got the eyebrows. He's got the Tucci eyebrows, and you don't. I'm more Mediterranean looking like Tucci. Can you say that? That's true too. That's true too. Yep. Yep. I just said eyebrows, but. And how's your Italian, Kevin? Yep. Bono. <laughs> bueno. A few of my friends have been watching it as well. It it popped up on a recommendation list, so I, I started watching it. Um and like my mother likes it as well. I I mean there's great photography in it. Like I'm not a big travel or cooking show kind of guy. They're on a lot in my house between the rest of my family. It's it's beautifully shot. He he brings you around the place well. It's it's interesting because it's right as the pandemic kicked off. So there's kind of like they're learning the protocols. They're wearing masks. They're touching elbows. But at the same time, when they open a wheel of Parmesan, the masks go away and everyone sticks their fucking face in it. But mm. it's a bit of fun if you're watching. After that, then the Jupiter's Legacy trailer dropped. So it's a three minute trailer. Kevin, I know you've just read or just been reading the the collected Jupiter's Legacy stuff um, did you enjoy the book? Yeah, like I, I really love the book. It's really, really good. Um, the trailer looks a little bit different. It does, like, kind of just with certain characters being in certain places. It's just like, oh, that might not necessarily be like the book. But um, you know how it goes anyways, like with these adaptions and stuff. I liked it. Everybody else comments on the fact it looks really cheap. I kind of, I always think anything that's non-Marvel or DC kind of generally looks cheap to a degree on tv and stuff you know like even like aspects of the boys even though i love it it, it's just like my initial kind of uh, impression was like oh it looks a little bit cheap you know but then when you kind of watch it and you see like the the show or the production wise i think it's just it's not so much of an issue i have a bit of issue with the the concept of saying something looks a bit cheap as well though i mean like i'm not privy and i've not done the research into the budgets and stuff but like Again, when you look at Mutant X was the benchmark at one point, you know, and the, the costume budget was just black shirts, black trousers and black coats. Like, mm. they're... they're... I, I think, like, everyone's kind of saying cheap, but I think it's probably more that it looks kind of soapy. You know, that there's a lot of choices that they've made aesthetically that look yeah. like cheap things as opposed to it being cheap. So, like, that, I, I noticed there was just so many... Sh- so much of the trailer seemed to be set at like sunset or something and just all the, the the whole color profile of the show screamed soap opera or maybe maybe not less maybe not like a, a daytime soap but you know something kind of something that you'd watch on abc at you know eight or nine o'clock on a monday night it was just 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 and not not kind of saturated in a in a kind of an interesting way but just 
the the entire look of it was you know it looks like a drama with capes which is a, a nice premise but i think it doesn't look like it's going to pull it off in a in an interesting dramatic way it's just going to be a bit soapy for for lack of a better word and i think that's like i, I think maybe people are saying cheap but it's not necessary because i mean you know the, the costumes were made at iron head iron head do great stuff you know it's it's not yeah it's not cheap so much as it's the aesthetic choices or the kind of taste or or things guiding it is cheap as opposed to actual money spent i definitely think often when people say cheap what you're really saying is that the ambition is running up against the top end of the budget you know like it's it's not that it's cheap it's they're spending a shit ton of money but they don't have enough money to do as big an idea as they have that being said, there is a moment in the trailer where one of them is like in a living room talking to somebody else and it just reminded me of Arrow and that super cut of people walking into sitting rooms and Arrow going, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. You can skip through at least yeah. 30 minutes of those CW shows where people are it, talking it about their feelings. kind of like Arrow and not, not, even, not even kind of any judgment like on that show, but so much of it was just about rich, pretty people and, you know, the dramas behind uh, all the superhero stuff. And it just, it just screamed that, you know, like this long haired guy talking to his uncle, presumably about his dad. And it just, it just looked exactly like something out of Arrow, you know? So is it, I can never pronounce his name, Frank, uh, Qu- Quitely or Oatly or? Quitely. Quitely. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a kind of a play on words of quite frankly. Frank. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, <gasps> Yeah, it's not his real name, as far as I know. <laughs> Did you not know that? <laughs> no. I want to screenshot Aiden's face. It's brilliant. <laughs> I really got to screenshot your face. <laughs> yeah, as I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not his real name. It's it's a play on, quite frankly, Frank quite because oh. Oh, that's awful! I've never put it together. <laughs> I, I have to. I'm gonna I have even to, I'm taught gonna, myself to say his name by reducing it to quite. I'm gonna have to look it up because I'm pretty sure that's what that's what it is. But uh, I'm gonna have to look it up now, just in case I'm wrong. V- Vincent, I don't know how to pronounce the second name, but Vincent Dean or Deegan or Dagan or something like that. Um, depending on what part of it looks like, a kind of a. Celtic name like Scots Gaelic or something because he is Scottish um, but uh, yeah it's Vin- Vincent D-E-I-G-H-A-N in parts of Ireland that would be pronounced Deegan or Deegan so I don't know how he pronounces it but yeah that's that's not his real name there we go do you just want to end it there for, for the episode? <laughs> And like my dad used to do uh, some restaurant reviews for like local magazines and he would he was reviewing takeaways and he wrote under the pseudonym Kerry Holmes. And like that's right on the same fucking mm-hmm. line, quite frankly. Yeah. Okay, fucking hell. <laughs> what were we talking about? Jupiter's legacy. Yeah, Mark Miller Frank Quitely, which is mad, uh did they basically they did the first two books, and then they re- later kind of released like a prequel story to how those characters came to be, if you get me. And I actually, when I read it, I read the prequels first and then the, the probably what the TV show is based on. But I say the TV show might actually be based on more heavily on the original two books and then kind of take parts from the prequel books, if you get me. Uh, but I loved, 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 loved the prequel stuff. Not that the... Uh, original story the first two books not that they're not good it's just i really love the prequel stuff it was like set in like kind of oh i just say the 50s maybe i think i think it's a bit earlier i think yeah like the, the 30s or 40s they've got a sort of 30s like serial adventurer vibe in the in the initial um it's kind of the phantom type stuff yeah 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 <clears throat> and hollywood and all that kind of stuff it's brilliant that stuff i loved like the artist on the book is great, and like the not Frank, because I'm not a big fan of Frank's work, but uh, the other guy Torres, I can't think of his name, something Torres, but uh, he's brilliant on the books as well. So I loved, and it's a little bit more like kind of commentary on society, political, and all that kind of stuff 
than the second one. The second one's a little bit more superhero-y, if you get me, you know? A bit like the, the, the first book kind of talks about the trials and tribulations between the relationships, uh, how homosexuality is perceived in Hollywood and uh, to the general public at the time, and all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's, a, really, it's a really, really good book. Uh, I, I kind of, I'd be interested... It'd be kind of nice if they did it, like, the way the book is, if you get me. But I'm pretty sure they're going to just come out with a story and overlap them and kind of go back to the past, present, and all that kind of stuff, you know? Flashbacks all the time. I remember listening to an interview with, I think it was Grant Morrison, and he was talking about Miller a bit. And I don't want to put words in Morrison's mouth because I, I can't quite remember if he said this or if I just connected the dot. But there was a little, whatever way they talked about Miller, they talked about how he had started kind of writing his stuff in a very ready to produce for television kind of way or he he approached his his work had suddenly taken a very like th- th- this could be converted to television kind of easily yeah he he kind of just does a lot of pitches he views he views his comic books as a feeder for tv yeah. um whether morrison said that or not like i've 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 kind of read or heard people even just recently when the trailer came out saying the same thing that like a lot of what he does is a it's kind of pitches for for ideas you know yeah and as long as he's writing stuff that like as long as he's writing stuff that he's interested in and likes doing um you know that's that's cool i suppose you know it's just us being a well maybe me being a little sort of embittered going that's such a cynical way to approach it, but it's like, it's smart. He's making fucking money. He's getting his shit produced. You know, he's, he's building his Miller verse, you know, sticking his name on it, you know, the Disney style thing, you know, building his identity rather than nameless writer in the background. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I think like a lot of people will know, like, even like say that the big, like people who are kind of like on the fringe of the kind of fandom and this kind of stuff would be aware. Oh, like Miller, he wrote kick ass. He wrote this, he wrote that, you know, they'd be aware of kind of, projects he's been attached to the past you know and do we know if jupiter's legacy is like a, a netflix drop and we're going to have the whole lot of it or is it going to be a week 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 release probably be all at once that's that's kind of netflix's thing yeah hopefully the, the only time that it's not don't know how it's week to week is if, you know if it's kind of on tv elsewhere or something but if it's a netflix exclusive then it's yeah it's all at once that's mm. their model so yeah it'll be all at once yeah yeah, RuPaul is like week by week because it airs on VH1 or something like that. And then uh, any of the Netflix original stuff just drops it instantly, doesn't it, more or less? Yeah, I mean, uh, they sort of... Um, yeah, like the Star Trek stuff had to deal with CBS, I think, so it was a week to week, you know, and there's a few things like mm-hmm. that where it has to air first before it gets on. One of the funny things that I'm... I don't know, maybe it's just a pandemic. Maybe it's just somebody got in their head to do a different promo push for it. But they've been airing the terror on the BBC. And they've been promoting that as if it's new. But, like, that's been on Amazon for fucking ever. And they're, you know, they're on season two, season three of it at this point, And they're promoting season one on BBC as if it's a brand new fucking thing. Which is, I don't know, interesting. It's weird, though, because those shows, like... The likes of BBC and stuff, they have to buy the rights to those shows. So they're literally like, they're literally like X amount of people in the UK have Netflix or Amazon, whatever, you know? And it's just like, kind of, they pay for that service. If they want to watch the show, it's there. However, we're going to spend, like, to get the rights to show it over here, you know? It's mad. It's, like, it's kind of like a waste of money. So the next thing I have on my list then, however briefly, is I saw a thing saying that Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be in a serialization of the 39 steps the 39 steps is a play that's been running in london that i didn't think necessarily needed to be broken out into a serialization but that being said amazon prime i think benedict cumberbatch they'll throw money behind it and we'll we'll have a look at it and see if it's good have you watched anything cumberbatch has done outside of the like big blockbuster stuff yeah um no uh, sherlock holmes i remember when he worries playing dominic cummings about brexit yeah, I remember that. It's about the Cambridge Analytica thing. I believe it's on Netflix. Um, yeah, I've watched a couple of things with him. Yeah, like he, I, I like the guy. He's a good sort of stage and dramatic actor, and he's kind of you see him. It's one of these things where people get kind of swallowed up by the big blockbuster stuff they're in. So I guess it's nice to see people doing um, things with less green screen. I think there's a lot of stuff though that they they do still do. It just it doesn't get the same push because. A lot of the time, it's 
mm, not that it's bad it's just it doesn't get any kind of hype around it you know you're only going to really hear about something if if it's got a bit of hype and then they decide okay we need to market this more because we've got something good in our hands but i mean the, the amount of stuff you see on netflix or amazon with people that you're kind of like when did this come out when was this and you kind of realize that oh this was like this came out in 2020 and you just don't hear about it because it's just like i said maybe not bad but nobody's talking about it and it's less to do with it's less to do with the kind of dominance of blockbuster stuff it's just sometimes this stuff you know not that it's not 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 worth watching but it just it just doesn't get the same most of the time when you hear about stuff it's because of some marketing hype and they've decided to hype it they've just they decide to hype it because they think it's got potential basically they're not going to try to push something that well we've been kind of trained by sort of our generational upbringing of the the direct to dvd direct to video kind of market that like if it didn't get a distributed release then it's probably not worth checking out and it probably isn't but there's so much stuff that just goes straight to streaming and when you don't hear three month lead in and publicity for it is it is it good or have i just not heard about it like you know what a, I mean? a lot of the time you know when something is a, a massive box office success it's because it also has this huge marketing push behind it like it doesn't matter if people think it's good or bad they just hear about it so much that they're going to check it out. You know, when it comes to the weekend or whatever, or whenever they're about to spend some money, it's like, well, I've been here, there, so I'll check it out. And then the reason that decision happens months in advance, it's it's when, you know, somebody is seeing kind of dailies or whatever from a production and they're going, okay, you know, this is looking really good. This is shaping up nicely. So let's, let's actually spend more on this. Like, Aquaman was a huge success, but that was, they marketed the fuck out of that. We saw so much about that for so long. It doesn't matter how much of it you're giving away. It's just enough people saw it and went, this could be big. There's enough in here that, you know, it's, it's got to, it's got to appeal to this demo and this demo and this demo. So let's market the fuck out of it. And, and that, that's what happens. Like, it doesn't matter if a film's good or bad. It, it's just about, the majority of the time when something is a huge smash, it's it's because they've spent, you know, a, 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 an extra chunk, of, like whatever the production budget is, the marketing is its own separate monster. Marketing sometimes is, and advertising is, the budget almost kind of rivals the actual production. Um, and it's a separate, like that, I think there was a time when, you know, production budgets included the the advertising and marketing costs and now they seem to be like their own separate thing well that's one of the things that killed john carter to a degree wasn't it the the budget for the marketing was the same as the budget for making the film and you ended up with a 500 million dollar monster that couldn't make its money back um and that movie's fun it's okay it's clunky yeah you know i i don't have an emotional investment in whether or not they make their money back but i enjoyed the movie i had fun i ate popcorn Got to see McNulty from The Wire flighting around in a spaceship. It's great. Was it the guy who played Gambit in The Wolverine? Taylor Kitsch, yeah. Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. That poor bastard can't catch a break. No. Um, mm. Even when he jumped on Drew Detective, fucking killed it. I know, yeah. So the other thing I saw is um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is in the new Indiana Jones movie, which got mentioned alongside the notion that James Mangold is directing the new Indiana Jones movie. Now, I had missed that. That happened at the end of last year. What is it? What else is he done again? Directed? Uh, 310 to Yuma, Logan, and uh, the Le Mans 66. Oh, yes, Logan and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The A-Team? Yeah, I love, I love 310 to Yuma and the Wolverine. Did he do 310 to Yuma? That's really good. Did he do the A-Team or am I making that um, up? I can't remember. That's not mangold is it it's i like that a team movie to be fair i think it had a lot of problems but i l- i think the a team as a con it proved the a team could work on film even if that film wasn't great if that makes any sense carnahan yeah no i think it was carnahan i don't think it was mangold i don't think yeah i think that a team movie was fun um i know we're, we're getting kind of way off course here because i do have thoughts about that fucking movie i don't like rampage jackson 
made a fucking tool of himself on He's that. Creeping. Um what was the name of the fight show? Um He was doing it before that. Liam Neeson was a Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Liam Neeson was a good cast for Hannibal. I think the protege storyline was kind of ham fisted in to make Bradley Cooper the kind of lead of the thing. Didn't need to do that. The A team is a an ensemble. You don't need to push a lead into us. But is Indiana Jones dead? Like are we are they really just flogging a dead horse here? Are they trying to yeah. recover from Crystal Skull? How many how many Indiana Jones does Shia LaBeouf do? Was it two just, or one? Just the one. Just the one. Do you like, think Phoebe Waller-Bridge those... is going to be the the mentee this time? Is she writing it or is she in it? I assume she was writing it. She's in it. She's the, the second lead. Hmm. I, I, can, I, I get the hype behind, behind Fleabag and everything, but... Uh, I think it's very specific to her voice and that show, you know? Um, yeah, I don't see... I think it's great she's doing more, but I think... I, I think she's going to end up in a lot of stuff that, that isn't... It's not why people like her. And um, I don't think... Yeah, wait till the Indiana Jones guys, you know, find out. And by those guys, I mean those toxic guys who, you know, made a big deal about. I really like Fleabag. I watched some of the, um, what was the sitcom where they're staying in derelict houses? It wasn't called Crashing, was Crashing, it? Crashing, maybe, yeah. Um, I watched some of London Irish, which she's in and might have written a bit as well. Um, I assumed she was writing on Indiana Jones until he asked me there and I checked and I was like, oh no, actually she's not credited as writing because I thought the writing thing... Because okay, she's, she's after writing the latest Bond film, did she? Or the next one? Yeah, she's, I don't know if she... I don't know if it... I don't know the... Sorry, No Time to Die, the most recent one that has yet to be released for the last year and a half. Um, she's a, got a writing credit on it. I don't know how much she wrote the whole thing versus how much she's got a writing credit. Given that she was getting onto that Indiana Jones movie, I thought maybe she's writing on that as well. And the thought that crossed my mind was, um, ordinarily, your writing success would be gauged on how successful the movie that you just wrote was. Mm -hmm. um, and she might have been getting away with a bit of murder there because she's got a big gig like Indiana Jones without that Bond movie coming out. So um, mm. not that she doesn't do good work, but like, it's nice to get it's nice to get the next job before the last one gets judged. Um, but she's not writing on it, so that whole thought process is redundant. Um, uh, but you know, I didn't realize she was like. So is she kind of replacing Indiana Jones in a sense, or is she like is she like the new Shia? I doubt it. I mean, they, they've got to know that was the wrong way to go with that. You'd hope. Um, just make just focus on making Indiana Jones seem like a legend, or you know, just stop, stop, or just stop. Yeah, just stop making Indiana Jones movies. Yeah, just stop. But, like, just, but if like, you're doing like, it, like I'll. I'd say, like, in all, like, the different... Ah, to be honest, I think in all, like, you know, you can say, like, Star Wars, yeah, they were popular movies in the late 70s, 80s and stuff. And, yeah, like, they did the prequels and now they're after doing the trilogy and stuff and they're doing other kind of, like, spit-off movies and TV shows and stuff. It's fine because it's, like, Mandalorian can just be a big, huge world. I know, like, they always try to bring it in, like, the, you know, Luke Skywalker's a Mandalorian and all that kind of stuff. But, like, in terms of franchises, basically is what I'm trying to say, in terms of franchises that just didn't need the comeback or a reboot or whatever. Like, I like Indiana Jones. It's fun. But, like, when I was a kid, it was up there with, like, Jewel of the Night or, you know, that kind of, like, What's the other one? I can't think of the other name, but uh, Romancing the Stone. the Stone. Classic Saturday evening RTE fair. Yes, yeah, they were like, you know, they're kind of like, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, they're kind of just fun action adventure, kind of rom com -y, whatever, you know. I know Indiana Jones necessarily isn't the, the same thing, but as a kid, it was that kind of vibe for me, you know, like adventure movies. But uh, I just thought, it's just like, just leave it, you know. Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe Waller's brilliant. She is excellent, excellent, excellent. I love her. She's crazy talented and stuff. But as a, as a franchise that I'm interested in, or I like, it's just like you can leave it, you know? So my completely off-the-cuff fucking guess while we've been talking here, two ways to go with Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She has that goofy, affable Hugh Grant British thing going. Marcus Brody's daughter, 
And I don't know if you remember Brody in the Indiana Jones movies, his his sidekick who, you know, from The Last Crusade gets sent off with the book and is lost in the market with Salah. So you can go the sort of goofy comedy version of that, but there's a scene there's a moment in Last Crusade where He's telling the Nazis how you'll never find Marcus Brody. He speaks 17 languages. He knows everybody in every country on every continent of the world. He's a ghost. He'll be gone. And there's a there's a version of her as Brody's daughter that is that, that would be kind of fun to see. Mm. Like, still kind of goofy, but, like, competent as hell. Does that yeah, make like sense? Kind of, yeah, like, I think that's just like, like you know, like, like I said, I love the movies. And if they're bringing out more, it's like, yeah, I can go see them and stuff. Um, I don't really want to see Harrison Ford trying to save the world again okay well so i mean what i'm gleaning from kevin's <laughs> from your whole take on this is fuck indiana jones sequels just stop doing it oh, well, I, I like i like i like them like i'm saying i like the movies they are always good fun movies growing up and stuff but it's just like kind of i think i think they're only talking about them again because of aquaman basically why like why, why aquaman like that that was a success uh, just because of the kind of the, the globe trotting kind of treasure hunting element of it just showed that there was like an appetite still for these big globe hopping adventures you know like it, it was kind of around uh, uh, yeah well for ford's been pushing for it like he loves the jones stuff does he yeah he doesn't like solo like, but he likes the end of jones I mean, he, uh, I rem- uh, fact check the hell out of this, but I remember that there was like a contingency in his Star Wars contract that he would do this as long as there was an Indiana Jones coming on the other side of it. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Do we? Is he still believable as a world? Like, I can see if he ha- if he helps Phoebe. Like, I could I can see Phoebe saving the world and stuff, and like maybe getting like some assistance. But it's just not like Phoebe's far more capable of saving the world than than he is at this stage. Surely is he is he pushing eighty? He's in the seventies anyway. No, no, no. Is he going to be like the Sean Connery? Wasn't Sean Connery in the end? Of the yeah, that's right, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, he could be that. Isn't yeah. he going to be? Yeah, like I can see if they did something like that, I'd kind of get it a bit more, you know. That's kind of what they were trying to do, and when they were pushing Shia really hard, which was, isn't that crazy that he he just got pushed so hard for so long, and he clearly just wasn't. Mm. I know. I never liked the guy. I'm glad he's. he's I'm glad he's cancelled. Never liked the dude. Didn't get the appeal. He's he's cancelled. Yeah, is definitely. he cancelled? You, you heard you heard that. I mean, what, I mean, are you saying cancelled based on behaviour, or you just don't see? Well, ba- based on behaviour, yeah. I mean, he. I mean, did Honey was Honey Boy not huge? Olivia Wilde kicked him out of the latest thing she's directing because she heard about the stuff, the allegations that FK Twigs had made about him, and some nasty stuff. He's he's a piece of shit. And he has been, and it's been clear to see for, mm-hmm. to me anyway, at least. But e- e- even that aside, even that aside, like Transformers and that Indiana Jones movie, I was just like, he's not a leading man. Like nobody's going, God, oh, yeah, got to go see that for, for my boy Shia. Love that dude. Like, no, 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 no one that is a Harrison Ford fan is going, yes, give me Shia in my, my Harrison Ford movie. Come on. It is funny that he got such a big push, you know, because like I remember going to see the the first Transformer movie, and uh, to be honest, I came out of the cinema and I was just like, that was fucking brilliant, you know, I loved it. And then after that, I I almost instantly disliked him, you know, to a degree. It was just it was so hard to watch him going like, I saved the world, and I can't even tell you. And it's just like that's great if saved the world. You can't do an XL, man. You don't get the job. He got a little bit insufferable. I did not enjoy that Transformers movie. The first one? It's great. <laughs> mm. You've got a, a an, an alien species whose entire evolution is based on hiding themselves so as to better, what, survive and combat, whatever. And they can't figure out to stay in car form out back in the alleyway when the kid goes into the house. Transformers, robots in disguise. Standing on your neighbor's cat and making noise even though the boy said be quiet. Did y'all watch Invincible? I didn't like it at all. I loved I it. I struggled. I was I was waiting for the episode to be over. Really? The humor was really awkward. Like just little just little kind of scenes here and there were just like bad attempts at humor. Just 
didn't work. And then the the production values of the show, it's it's very, very low quality. And it's 40 minutes long. And it's trying to be this big, fun, superhero blockbuster kind of thing, but with an edge. And it just... It, it it's like what you were saying earlier, Aiden, you know, about the, the budget and the ambition and stuff. It's just they're not lining up. Mm. And I think it undermines I think it undermines anything they're trying to do in terms of the writing, whether it's the humor or just even the, the drama. It just it's bad, I think. It's quite bad. I, I no, go ahead. I <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going to take the, I guess, the opposite, like, uh, well, opposite and similar, like, the opening shot with Titan running into the warehouse, the CG did not help them there, it it looked bad, that moving camera shot as he ran towards them, um, I'm, I'm, like, I don't know that we've said it in this version of the, the podcast, but, like, I work in the animation industry, so I'm very, very forgiving of, um, what's, what's achievable and what's done in an animated production and you know you do what you can do that being said that shot looked a little janky it didn't help so i'm trying trying to look past it but that's kind of my problem that that there's a lot they're trying to do that they like do what you can do and it for me it's doing so much that it it cannot do and it brings the whole thing down that the fight scene at the end like there's just again kind of comparing it to you know, anime, like anime does limited animation so well. There are so many, Kev, I don't know if you watched the, the Canapa effect doc I sent you yesterday, but they kind of make a point of that where there's, there's shows where, you know, an average episode is maybe 3000 drawings. And like it shows specific examples of like these big action set pieces with very, very limited animation, but the timing on like the kind of major moments and poses is so strong that, the the limit the limited aspect of the animation actually lends itself to the dramatic moments so it's almost like it's it's almost like it's ramping up and down in terms of like in terms of the action in terms of it, it's almost kind of like slow motion in some ways because character will move and it will hold really long in a moment and then it'll move to the next one and it works really well kind of doing that limited approach but that fight scene at the end of the episode was just choppy it was just like frames missing it wasn't it wasn't limited in the same way where they're kind of like picking the biggest moments and kind of looking at the rhythm it's just like here's what's going to happen and we'll draw however much of it we can before before we've got to wrap the thing up and it's it's bad like it 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 doesn't work at at all i want to be forgiving but it's whether it's a case of more money spent on voice cast or whether they're actually just not spending money at all. But I mean, 40, 40 minute episodes of animation is just a really odd choice anyway. You know, like that's, that's a lot of work per episode and yeah, it, it's just, it's just not working for me. Well, let's, let's come away from the, the production value then for a moment and, and go, you know, the story end of things. Like, did you in, get anything or did you enjoy the why can't titan just take why can't titan just kill if if he can get isotope on side so quickly by the end why can't he just kill machine head himself even before machine head gets the the chip that kind of gives him quantum processing why can't he just crush his head and take over if isotope is so quick to get behind him why do we spend 40 minutes it's not like, yeah, why give him that chip at all and then have this big drawn out thing and it's at the end it's like, I'm actually the boss now. He could just crush Machine Head there and then, episode over. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I, I like, the thing is, I have a... There's no argument that it isn't uh, a frustration when you're watching the show going, just crush his head. What don't we know that... You, why don't you just kill the guy? Um, if you really want to take the take the, the spot that big or that badly. Um, the, the thing I know from reading the book is like Machine Head is an underboss. And, you know, there's, there's 
somebody else pulling those strings and he couldn't necessarily take that guy on um even still i feel like you can but but he but by but by the end of the episode he if if machine heads an underboss those people if they haven't revealed those people yet he still could have done all of that mm-hmm. i don't know you're right i was very very bored watching it i was just kind of i was cringing at the kind of like that point where he's holding the guy upside down like it, it kind of cuts to the scene where you know he's holding the guy upside down and he's like you know he's got to believe that you're going to drop him and then he drops him and he's like you're going to catch him and he's like yeah and then the scene's over and like there was no lead into that scene it, that scene was just about the joke it was just for the sake of a bit of humor in the episode and there was a few moments in the episode like that where they were just like trying to be just you know trying to balance the story with these these little fun humor beats and those didn't work at all either they were just like that's what i'm saying like the budget whatever in terms of like the action and stuff it does it's it's pulling down those attempts as well because they're just kind of out of nowhere they're kind of awkwardly inserted and it just it it feels strange kevin did you watch the episode (laughs) i did indeed yeah yeah um, I really no, to be honest because Brian had asked me beforehand had I seen it and I, 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 and I hadn't and he kind of told me that he wasn't particularly keen on it and uh, I always feel especially when we talk about stuff I always feel like the person with the least uh, what's the, like mm, how do I say this it's like I, 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 I think I'm the most easy pleased out of all of us I'm just like oh battle beast and he's okay. kicking Invincible's ass oh it's 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 action and it's 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 great and I loved it you know but uh, I'm aware that there's like there's definitely like parts in it that are kind of stiff and stuff. And like, I there's, there's a really weird scene where they just they it's an exterior shot of I think it's a school or something, but it's 3D, it's computer generated like or whatever, but computer modeled, and it looks it looks so bad. It's just you could have just done a a, a, a drawing, a drawing that would have just taken less time and just be fine, you know. Um, Put, and then, like, literally, all they would have done is like make it a nighttime version, daytime version, whatever. But it's just, it's uh, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. But in terms of like not getting into that stuff, in terms of the show and the story and things, um, I like it. I think it, it, it felt like the first episode moved really fast into his dad killing the Guardians of the Globe, and now it's kind of going a little bit slower. I think that too. I, I want to double check this, but like, like I know where this is going. You know where it's going. We. Brian knows where this is going. We like I don't want to say it for the sake of spoilers on this thing, but I do feel like the comic books had got there at this point. And I'm kind of like can we can we do this please? Yeah. Yeah, cuz it says like the first the first or the comic books is kind of like that's kind of a big reveal that his dad does that to the Guardians of the Globe, you know. Mm-hmm. And then and then like kind of in the in the series, which I liked, don't get me wrong, but they kind of they they get straight to that by the end of the first episode, you know. And it's and it's like it's a big moment in the books, but like obviously it's it's a moment in the show, but it wasn't built up the same. But now it's like they're taking it really like slow and steady, and it's just kind of yeah, it's a little bit. It's, don't get me wrong, I actually do really like it. I enjoy watching it. Um, I thought I'd like Mark more. Yeah, I think I like that's going to bring me to this this point where um, Michael Dorn was a great piece of casting for Battle Beast. It's Worf. That makes perfect mm-hmm, sense. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um. Jeffrey Donovan as Machine Head, Gillian Jacobs as um, Atom Eve, J.K. Simmons, Sandra O, oh, uh, Mahershala Ali. Like I want to say as well, just on the voice cast quickly. Um, I said to Kev as well yesterday. Like I love Jason Manzukas in everything. Like I think he's the funny. I think he's a scene stealer and everything. I hated that show, The League. Oh, I love that show. He's in that and he's brilliant. Like, he's the only time I laughed at The League was him. I think he's great. He grates on me so much in Invincible. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that he's he, he's he's just doing the exact same. He's doing his character from Big Mouth, which I wouldn't even mind because he's funny in Big Mouth, but he grates so much in in this as well. Sorry, but back to your saying about the cast. Well, I mean, we can come to that, but like, I think the thing is, when you're reading these books, everybody's a little, well, for me anyway, in my head, everybody's less. Everybody's everybody's given it loads in their performances here. And I think the stuff that Rexplode does 
as a character in the books. Like he cheats on Adam Eve. He's a bit of a dick, but he's not this. He's not Manzukas level energy around the place. You know, like. Mm-mm. And it's just that I think it's going to be hard for Manzukas to pull this back in by the time we get to some of Rex's character development, which is handled better in the comic book. But what I was kind of coming to was like, uh, this is a this is sort of a, a broader conversation. But like, you're definitely paying over the odds for voice actors that don't have a hell of a lot to do, and it's like I, I wonder as well though, are they because like they're. F- their fee is way, way less than you think it is for voice acting anyway. And I was saying this as well, like, you know, J- J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons did four episodes or four seasons of Korra, you know? So like Simmons is huge. He's a big deal, but mm. he like, yeah, Nickelodeon put up the money to now. He, he was probably one of the biggest names in, in that show. He was probably the biggest name in that show. But at the same time, what I'm saying is like, is yeah, they're, they've got a top line voice cast, but it's not the same. It's not their usual fee, you know. It's 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 a good amount less. And yeah. aside from Simmons, they're big TV names, but they're not huge. They're, you know, like the, the the biggest two would be kind of yeah. Yeah, I just I don't I I'm just nitpicking really. Like even like back in Kung Fu Panda, you know, I was going. That character does not need to be Angelina Jolie. That character does not need to be Lucy Liu. Like it's it's good that they're big names, but they're doing not a lot, and you're paying more money than you would pay for a voice actor who's a professional voice actor. But that's just for publicity, basically, right? But that, that's kind of what I mean. Is that like the show? It's it's kind of purporting to be much much more than it is. It wants to have this big top line kind of cast. It wants mm. to have this kind of big. It wants to have like you know the kind of Sam Raimi Spider Man kind of energy in terms of your coming of age superhero stuff. It wants to be all of that with this, yeah. you know, almost intergalactic element mm. as well. And it can't. It can't have it all because it can't. It can't do all that and be forty minutes long. And again, I'd like like when when I, when I talk about, hmm. I think sometimes screen actors doing voice work over egg it because they're doing voice work. Whereas if you get a good voice actor, do you know what I mean? Like they feel like, well, I'm a big name coming to voice. I need to pair. I need to deliver big. Whereas a voice actor comes in and delivers what's needed. Sim- Simmons has done voice. Simmons has done voice for. Simmons is the yellow peanut M&M. You know, <laughs> he's done voice stuff for the longest time. He's done it for, you know, he's a voice actor too, you know, and a lot of the other yeah. cast. I, I don't have an issue not, with Simmons. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like a lot of the other cast then are just kind of names. Um, yeah. They're very, very different disciplines. Hmm. You know who I think is the main villain of the show? Adam Eve's parents. They are teaching her the wrong lessons in life. They're not, they're they're not good parents. They're not they're very not progressive. They're not they're not they're not very caring. I nope. mean, their heart's probably in the, the right place, but it's just wrong. Yep. She don't need no man. They they bad parents. They are bad parents. When Mark's flying around and eventually he finds Titan, I really liked mm. that sequence. Just visually, I liked the sort of the the pinky hues of it in the airplane, and there was just some nice flitting around as he's just. I think they do the flying thing well. That opening title card still sucks. Um, it does. It What's his name? He's remo- invincible. Yeah. It, it, um, it doesn't work the way they think it's working or they hope it's working. Or maybe there's a payoff in episode 10 and it becomes something interesting. But when you get to the end credits and there's actually a theme playing, like, that's... I like the theme that they're using. So can we... Mm. You know, I, I'd like some opening credits or a theme song or something, but this card doesn't work for me. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. It, there's like to be honest, yeah. There's this. It's there's definitely issues within the show and stuff, and animation wise, it's not great. I do like the voice acting for the most part. I think like kind of voice acting is good and stuff. Um, some of the changes that they've made from the book to the TV show work. Some of them don't. Uh, it's definitely something I'm really like. 
to be honest, I, I really, I, I know it sounds weird, but it's just like, I'm really interested to see, I like it, but I'm really interested to see where the show goes and how long it goes on for, you know? Is this going to be like a a thing that kind of like a, a regular staple in everybody's streaming kind of like, you know, uh, routine, you know, every year we get the new the, Invincible. The, two, the first two episodes, the first two episodes did not make an impact at all on the day they were released. Nobody was talking about it. It wasn't trending anywhere yet. It, it hasn't made an impression at all. Yeah, it hasn't. And it... oh, really? Because because I was I was literally going to wa- rewatch it this uh, next week because I like it, you know, and I want to see kind of how, how it flows, like three or four episodes in a row, kind of thing, like you know. And I, I'm also doing nothing else with my life, so <laughs> seems like a good idea. I, I've seen people review it kind of like advanced reviews and loved the first two mm. episodes and were kind of making sure that they got the word out and telling people to watch it and then people didn't watch it at all and they've kind of said themselves they said themselves like they won't be reviewing it any further because nobody's really watching it but I kind of wonder as well is it the fact that like it really peaks with Omni-Man at the end of episode one and it's not even that there isn't an audience it's that the other episodes just aren't mm they're not matching those kind of moments at all, you know, and they're, they're, they're trying to build to it. Parti- I mean, particularly like the last episode was trying to build to that. Those moments. Yeah. Big confrontation in, in machine heads, penthouse or whatever. And I really liked, I liked that episode to be honest. Yeah. I, I mean, that's disappointing to hear as you say it. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm now pulling up the, I'm now pulling up the Invincible Twitter account going, oh shit, how many people are interacting with their tweets? You know, like I see tens and twenties comments and 2000 retweets or hearts. And it's like, oh, that isn't a hell of a lot for big show. Um, I, 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 I hope, I hope it kind of goes on for a while, to be honest. It'd be great if they got to cover what they covered in the books, you know, but I don't think it will. I don't think it will, to be honest. Or you end up with a scenario like that Spawn cartoon where you've got, you know, eight episodes of over-animated, you know. Do you remember the Spawn cartoon? I loved that when I was a kid. Yeah, it was so hard to get it. was It was hard to get access to it, but I loved it. I hated it. I hated it so much. You hated that cartoon? I I watched it because it was... I, I wanted to love it. I mean, I, I was still... I watched it because it was so visually different to anything going or that i was watching at the time it's bad but nothing ever fucking happened it's bad mm. Gar- gargles is on disney plus though is on disney plus that's due a reboot i can see that coming speaking of speaking gargles of, is brilliant David, yeah um, he did spawn and goliath didn't he he did he did right yeah. That, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 that's a good show gargles that's a great show gargles yeah gargles what is it and it's on Disney Plus, so go back and watch it. But just what I, what I was gonna say is like one of the just just kind of about Invincibles. One of the things I love about Invincibles sometimes is, and I, it's probably weird. It's probably like not a good thing. I don't know, but it's just like it really reminds me of like that eighties nineties kind of Saturday morning action uh, figures. Like they they all look like toys. Like the guy in the latest episode with the kind of the so bad the. St- the nah, tendons coming out of the stomach and stuff, you know, uh, battle beast. And all. But oh, no, I like that stuff. That's what I'm saying. I like that stuff. I, I, I'm not saying it's good. Like I'm, I'm definitely not. Like I'm not gonna be that person to say you're wrong or anything. That like I'm just saying. Like I, I like that. Yeah. I like how silly it is. <laughs> I, I liked it in in He Man. You know. Um, yeah. He looks like a toy. It's. Yeah, I love it. It's. Yeah, yeah even like, but you see, that's just. I, it, I loved. It? I loved it. I loved it when I saw it yeah, in He Man. Yeah, I know. I know. But that's what I'm saying. Like they look like like you watch it. And like I, but like it's just one of those books where it's just like Robert Kirkman obviously said to say Ryan Outley or something. It's like I want you to do like I want you to draw like four like of the craziest ridiculous super villains. Like go campy, do whatever you want, blah blah. Mm-hmm. blah. And it's just like like you, he can just go for it. Like I, but I like that. It's just like when I was a kid, we had this book and it was like monster wrestlers or something, you know, and um all the wrestlers like you'd have like a one that was like kind of a skeleton you wouldn't have the execution or one that was like frankenstein one that's like creature back lagoon one that's like an alien like they were yeah. all just like just parodies and ripoffs and tropes of all different types of sci-fi and fantasy and monsters and all that kind of stuff you know and um, from different genres but it was like they're but they're all by the way i, I like i like that too 
but it, you still you can still swing and miss at it you know just because it's a bit I, I love that you know there can be big swings and you can go wild and whatever and but that doesn't mean whatever you produce doesn't need another couple yes of passes. I, I, but yeah yeah I, 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 he, he looked i loved he, it it just I looked like it. a regular guy with like taffy i loved it i loved it's it like, I, it's, it's like i like i like where your head's at i like it's 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 bonkers cool but you know have another go with the i li- like the concept but have another go with the design you know I'm very, very forgiven of it because it, it, like, it's literally as Kevin said, and they've talked about that book and that issue specifically in in interviews, even you know, Wizard magazine, fucking years ago, or on websites and stuff. And it's like they literally they just needed more people for him to fight, so they just kind of went action figure silly, and these were throwaway, um, just go nuts goons, and and I think it would be kind of missing. They're they're just trying to stay as close to the comic as they possibly can, and to throw away the goofiness of that would be, I don't know. I think that would be a loss. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I know what Brian's saying, but yeah, I have to say I love it. Love it. But 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 even even you know I watched uh, a little brief documentary on Batman Beyond yesterday mm. um, that IGN had made, and they were talking about the fact that like they needed an entirely new rogues gallery. Uh, rogues gallery for for Terry and that they didn't want him to be fighting the same villains as as Batman mm-hmm. had been fighting, and they kind of approached it in in exactly the same way. They just they just drew stuff first and kind of thought like, okay, what's this guy's power? I don't know. And then they would hand it off to the writer and say, uh, this guy's maybe sound based. Uh, I've given him these big hands and he does stuff with sound and come up with something with that. And that worked. They did it. That worked for, like, but that's what I mean. Like Batman Beyond has some fantastic i like i like that stuff fantastic yeah, villains that are as iconic as as anything in batman's and they, they took the same approach they just went like kind of bonkers with it and gave it to a writer to kind of what i'm saying is like i i, I like the idea there but you can you can do better the only one of these people you're ever going to see again is battle beast oh well, yeah i know they're sticking to the comic and he had a 30-day turnaround to lash out i, yes, I didn't I, yeah, I didn't dislike the episode yeah. because of that yeah that's all I'm saying. Yeah. But but you can do it better too. You know? Yeah, and I like the episode because of that. And you can't do it better too. You know, and we're friends. We have different opinions. We're friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. I, I I like. I think I know exactly. Like I think I agree with what you're saying, Brian, in the sense that like if they wanted a better rogues gallery in that moment, they could sit down and do it. But what they wanted was to recreate the stuff that Ryan came up with in a weekend and lashed into the comic book on a deadline. And and that's that's what they did. They. They just recreated it. There is one character who isn't in it because he's just a fucking mess. And if you go and look at the images of him, it's like there's. Was that the the Mirror Man or something? Mirror Man. Yeah, or... he's got loads of like magnetic oh, yeah, plates yeah. around him, and it's just <laughs> like that's a train wreck of a thing to try and draw in the comic to begin with, let alone bring into an animation. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember. Yeah, it's just like why would he draw that? I think did he post him online? I think recently. That is the other thing, though. That like the. The designs are too complex for the animation budget they have as well. Yeah. Mm. Um. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm still enjoying yes, it. Yeah. I guess it's, it's what it boils down to. I'm, en- <laughs> I'm enjoying the show. I'm enjoying seeing the thing I love move. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Um. Even if I think the voice actors are giving it too much, even though I love the, the particular actors and actresses at play, um, I. I wish they'd just give us a theme tune. Give us something that we can give us something we can hum. You know, it's not it's never really a successful thing until you've got something you can hum. Moving along, then let's have a talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, which is. Are we not going to talk? Are we not going to talk about Grace and Frankie, uh, season six, episode four, the Funky Walnut? This is, of course, the Grace and Frankie corner with Kevin. <laughs> you've you watched Grace and Frankie this week, guys? Right? This is quite frankly. That, that's a good name for the Grace and Frankie podcast. <laughs> we, we, we'll move on to it after this. Go on. Back in the Winter Soldier. Well, hold on. Tell us about the Funky Walnut. Uh, well, Robert and Saul uh, grapple with, hell, with a health scare while Grace's bad knee sparks a new business idea. You, you, you've you not watched it. Bud's back. Bud's ex-girlfriend's back. We'll talk about it after. Moving on. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I, I wrote notes. A few notes. Uh, 
Give give us the first one. My first note is, of course, Zemo likes Turkish delights. I mean, who doesn't? He's a villain, and they're gross. <gasps> he hasn't had proper Turkish. Of course, he like Turkish delights. You fucking. They're they're rose I'm, I'm not saying goodness. I like them. I'm Fancy, just saying. I bet you've never. I cultured I brains. I bet you've. I bet I. I never said I. I don't know them, if I've had a real one because I won't eat them because I don't like them. He definitely hasn't had the real one. No, Turkish delights. He's a super villain, and he gives them to children. What lunatic will give something so horrifically horrible to children? I also feel it's kind of like it's like it's kind of like uh, Marvel going like, what's a what's a sweet that they eat in, a sweet that they eat in Europe? Europe they haven't got Hershey kisses. What 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 would they eat in Europe? And someone says Turkish delights, and they're just like, grand, get, give them a bag of Turkish delights. I'm gonna get you a bag of Turkish delights. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no, I haven't got a sweet tooth. Everybody knows this. It opened six years ago. Flashback to Io helping him break the programming. Yes. I liked the little, I liked the, I liked the sort of montage of flashback scenes with the various Winter Soldier parts of it. It it kind of gave me like a super cut of Winter Soldier costumes that made me want to go back and look at them again. Because like that first appearance stuff, they did a great job with the Winter Soldier. It's probably, I could, well, those Winter Soldier movies came out in... 2014? Uh, seven years ago, right? Is it? Yeah, seven years ago. Like, I'm not saying it, I'm not being funny when I say this, but it's just like, and I'm because I'm sure it's, it's happened to all of us, but it's like, wow, Sebastian has, has aged quite a bit. He looks older. Uh, Sam. That I did notice that in the, in the like the flashback cuts. He looks very sharp and fresh looking. In the I noticed couple. that though in Civil War, he looks quite different in Civil he does War compared to Winter Soldier. The Winter Soldier. He's quite, quite. Yeah, different. he obviously didn't want to go through the same sort of demand physically that he did for the Winter Soldier. I think the Winter Soldier, he went, no pun intended, buck fucking wild. He was in serious shape. I think there's a thing as well, like, and I, I don't know, this is a this is a glib thing I've said forever, but like, um, you know, young working actors don't have a lot of time to sit around in the sun and get leathery. They're trying to get work, you know? And then once people sort of hit big, you, you, you do see a bit of the like, I have... I have become kind of scrotomy with overexposure to UV rays. I'm making lots of assumptions about Sebastian Stan's a lot. Um, yeah, be careful. Past times, yeah. You don't want the the Stan army getting. After He's you. lovely. He's really lovely. <laughs> the Sebastian Stans, if they're not called the Sebastian Stans, I I I do not endorse. I do not endorse Satan's um, comments. Do you, Do you think the Sebastian Stans will be annoyed that I called him kind of scrotomy? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they, they will. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he, he's a, he's a sharp, witty, charming scrotum. I'll cut all of this out then. There's a lot of editing to preserve my own safety. The scene with Io is cool. Um, the eight hours of time, like the he's a means to an end stuff, was good. Um, I think the the standout, and you're seeing a lot of it even in just what's trending, is is the John Walker stuff from the episode. Yeah, my when my note and my first note on uh, his next note was obviously we know he's been slowly losing his edge for the last couple of episodes. He's getting more frustrated. He feels like he's hitting a wall, kind of like physically and performance wise and all that kind of stuff. And he's just losing his edge. He's he's kind of he's uh, getting bitter almost, you know. And it's just like, but I love the way like you see like the kind of the disgruntled, angry. Uh, it's sad as well, but it's like. Uh, it's sad seeing Captain America as a bad guy, but even like the unshaved, the unkept, all that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's nice seeing him kind of just like slowly giving a fuck about being this, uh, this symbol. And he's more kind of caught up in his own head and kind of the fact that he feels like he's not good enough physically, you know, because I, I think he thinks he's the perfect, it's like yeah. Captain America wouldn't think about it. I think he obviously thinks he's the perfect uh, candidate to replace Captain America uh, morally and what he symbolizes and his values and stuff, but he's just not there physically. And obviously, he's uh, he's losing his edge. He's unkept. He's unshaven, and it's it's sad to see him become the bad guy. I think what I'd like to see is a little more of that pressure on him, because we're just seeing him bopping around the world. But I I kind of wish I was seeing, I don't know, more news coverage or like a, a superior that he has to report to is calling him out on failing or not meeting these deadlines and stuff, because he's just kind of popping up and just getting more mm. and more mental. Yeah, he he's he's carrying a lot of the the kind of load for conveying that to the audience. We're kind of inferring a lot of it from this internal thing, but it could do with just at least one scene 
showing that, like, he's doing a good job of, of implying that there's this other pressure on him, but it would help if they would just show that to the audience just in some way that. And that that's a that's a great way of putting it that he is he is carrying that load and you you do see this sort of struggle in him that he's trying to be Captain America and he's not meeting that and he's staring at the shield and he's he's just trying to convey an awful lot like the the scene with um Battlestar um you know when they're just having coffee and it's like okay they're they're friends this is normal like if we got a bit more time seeing him be like if this show was entirely focused on him and you watched him fall from grace like slowly break down over a season cuz like i th- i th- i think we could really get behind him and sympathize with him as he descended into this but we we're we're having to shorthand a lot of stuff to get there i'm not sure I'm still not sure about carly's rhetoric like whether or not what she's talking about makes sense. The words she's using to say it are very superficial. I, 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 I don't know. I, I get what they're trying to do with like her, her view and what she's trying to achieve, but I don't buy that she'd have that many people behind her. Um, they're not showing enough. Like why, why is it her? Uh, I'm just not really buying her as a charismatic figure this many people would get behind, you know? Um, and then the second thing is I'm really not buying them as a threat. Yeah. They're not really selling that at all. It's, you know, the whole point right up until the end of civil war from the airport scene onwards, we think that what Zemo is trying to do is, you know, release another five winter soldiers. So like from the the whole conflict in the airport scene is Iron Man wants to bring everybody in and Cap is saying there's five other winter soldiers out there. We got to stop him before he gets them. And they, they, and there's a real sense that one winter soldier is a goddamn nightmare. Exactly. Out of the world. And, and the fact that Zemo, obviously now we found out Zemo has all these resources and stuff, but Zemo is able to cause this huge upset on the world stage by killing King T'Chaka. You know, so mm. Zemo's a massive threat, but like you said, one Winter Soldier is bad enough. And now there are eight. Now, granted, they don't have the same training and stuff, but there's eight Super Soldiers out there, and the whole thing is about we got to get this other, these remaining seven doses or whatever that they have. And they just haven't they haven't sold that as being as uh, grave as it is. Yeah, because because like they if they'd show them do one thing on the same scale as Zemo killing. T'Chaka, we would kind of get like, oh, these guys mean business. But all they've done so far is steal vaccines and steal money. And in the last episode... Firebomb they, they a warehouse. Up, yeah, they both blew up a warehouse and killed three people. One of them was just working there a week. And, you know... And then, like, they, they're physically not even... Like, okay, they, they took... And then they took them out on the top of the, the trucks. But then in that scene, towards the end of the episode, they're really holding their own against them and it's just just not buying them as as the threat they're kind of making it out to be you know it's it's a little clunky it's... what there's one episode left is there two 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 two, two, two sorry two episodes left uh i kind of after the last episode i kind of just did feel like this they were kind of it's like we're being for force fed the flag smashers or realistically they're just a story device to pit um Captain and Sam together, then put them together, put them against. Uh, yeah, they, they, John they're not. They're not. They're clearly Alistair, not the main villain. And it's just, it's just so John gets the serum. Yep. Yeah, we're f- we're f- yeah. we're four episodes in, and they're not really. That's they're only a story device. Even even with the reveal that they're super soldiers, it doesn't feel threatening. When you see the 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 five additional Winter Soldiers in a small room, taking out their training masters, and and Bucky's walking that guy out like, they're scary. They're a scary bunch of people. Mm. Yeah, we're just not getting it from these guys. And I think the, like, I'm glad we didn't get some protracted scene where Walker gives himself the serum. Um, I think did, it's just fun to well, see did, him. Did, did Carrie say at one point that, like, that when they took the serum, it was like fire in her veins for like four days. She was, did I make, did I imagine that or something? Or did she say at one point 
when they took the serum oh like, i don't i don't remember that how it felt and how painful it was and that it was like i thought they said like it was a couple of days or something again that, that's it kind of it's a nitpick but i was like did i imagine that scene <laughs> i'm not but, sure it was that um was that have to go back and watch. soldier stuff no i i could have sworn that there was somewhere in one of our conversations with like one of the other flag smashers that, yeah. that she said something about like it was when they took it first it was like fire in her veins or something and how painful mm. the the transformation was i i don't know maybe I, maybe i imagined it but but yeah walker presumably takes it from from around the cafe onwards anyway it's a little in, it was a suppository as well <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but but like I was thinking like when he like sorry to interrupt anyway, but I was thinking like basically when he got the vax or the serum I was just like how is he gonna inject that like who's he gonna go to to inject that like do you know what I mean? Well that that was the thing with the scene with Nagel him saying that it, it requires way less of the the clunky machinery and and all that like they were just kind of you know yeah just kind of letting us know that. There was a little thing we talked about the notion that like John Walker throwing the shield around is a very linear effect. It, it, he throws it out and comes back. It's still mental to me that that is ever allowed to happen because it's it's a ludicrous it's a ludicrous function that we only allowed Steve to do because we knew he was super powered. Um, but even when they gave it to Walker, it was very linear out and back. Um, and this is the first time we've seen him in a fight. He bounces it off two people and he comes back to him. And it's like, oh, that's a nice little like now that he's got that super soldier thing. You know, it's not a big complexity, but it's a little growth on how he uses the shield. I think even before that, he throws it into the wall much the same way that Isaiah Bradley threw the the tin case into the wall. So, yeah, from that point, we kind of see, yeah, when he smashed the, when he smashed it into the wall, it's kind of like a little, that was the first clue that he's, he's after taking it. And he makes some comment about people having knives. Now, were there a lot of knives at play in that episode? Not that much. But I don't know yeah, what that was about. They, they pulled knives out. They didn't Tony Stark wasn't it wasn't no, wasn't it something like Howard Stark, I think his name is, had said to Captain America, he's like, Oh, it's like you know, you, these are these are soldiers, they won't be fighting you with pocket knives. Yeah. And then it's like Winter Soldier comes along and starts fighting with knives and stuff and it's like, yeah. Oh, is that what that's meant to be a I don't think so to be honest. I think people are Maybe. disconnecting them. But... I think I saw it somewhere. <laughs> so it's a reach. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe some writer was going for a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you see the did you see that like kind of in last week's episode or something there was a there was like soldiers outside a building and it had like a little circular sign on it with an X on it, you know? As in like no entry, that kind of thing. And apparently fans are reading into it saying that they're trying to do tie in the X Men into it. Oh, they're everyone's looking for, for X Men. It's just and it was just road signs. The um, the is was the character's name's Hoskins, Battlestar, yeah. wasn't it? Hop, Lamar Hopkins Hoskins. or Hoskins? Hoskins. 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 I think. Um, Sad single. I am surprised that he did not get, and the the amount of people that we have seen abruptly kicked by super soldiers into objects, you know, that um, I mean, I guess the death made sense. People are getting belted around the place a lot to not get injured. Um, but what did you think about the way he got dealt with? I mean, they, they telegraphed it all throughout the episode anyway, so I kind of expected it. Um, yeah, like there's... It, it does seem like a nitpick, but it, it I do think it there is inconsistency sometimes and like you can get hit by these guys and get thrown against the wall and come back, but then other times you might get a bad break and it's... It's just rather than being consistent, why don't you just come up with a better reason why this time was different? You know, because it 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 is it is kind of lending to that whole problem of like how dangerous are these guys? You know, they don't seem that dangerous. They they just seem like guys with masks now and knives. You're not really selling the fact that you know they they've got an advantage over more or less everybody in the moment here. The moment where um, the Dora Milaje took off his arm was kind of funny. It was great. <laughs> they were they were they were brilliant, did it? Yeah, they were so badass in it. So I loved uh, the line as well, where Sam is trying to get Bucky to get them to call, you know, back them off, <laughs> and Bucky instead just is like, yeah, "Looking good, John." 
<laughs> like very, very sarcastically. Great moment. It was it was a slow episode for me, but it had it had a lot of good character moments. Bucky kind of crying when he realized he's free. Um, John kind of realizing that you know, John kind of saying like they're not even super soldiers when he gets his ass kicked. Um, and the 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 th- theme of supremacy, white supremacy or superhuman supremacy, the 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 idea as well that like it, again the race thing gets played into it a lot. Like Sam and like four black women showed up and they weren't even super soldiers and they put him on his ass and he's he, he wants to be better than everyone. And that he 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 wants to he's always wanted to be the 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 bleeding edge top tier military best of the best of the best of the best and he's not living up to it he's not meeting it and that ambition coupled with this super soldier serum is going to be a problem but if the flag smashers like i think they're going to take a back seat now a little bit without like captain america's like, super soldier they definitely aren't the main the, the main threat no. but at the same time you know like when they're when they were fighting them at the end of the episode i wasn't really that engaged because because they haven't been consistent in talking about what type of threat they are. I know they're not the main, the main conflict is going to be um, John Walker and the power broker and however that's going to play out. The flag smashers are the, like you said, the, the flag smashers are this thing that are going to bring John and Sam kind of together and in confrontation. They're not the main, main threat, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, they're a story at the same time then when, when you've got a big set piece with, the heroes versus them. I'm not as engaged because they're an inc- they're not they're not the main threat, and they they've inconsistently depicted what type what of threat they are. And, yeah, like what what their capabilities are, and yeah, I you know they they just look like a bunch of stuntmen with knives as opposed to a, mm. a few people that you know oh, yeah, are, are going to be a real problem. I've, I've seen, seen a few people complain about the actor. Uh, I can't think of her name, but. Um, their leader. I've seen a few people complain about her online. I actually, to be honest, I actually don't. Though she doesn't bother me at all. I think like she's fine. And um, it's obviously like it's kind of more or less how her character is written as opposed to anything she's doing. I yeah, think. I think so. But um, definitely walking away from this episode, I felt like they are just more of a story device that kind of it's more to do with, like I said, John the serum, possibly the power broker. You know, however that's going to play out and stuff in it. Um, but like, there's apparently going to be a big like you know the rumors but like somebody said there's gonna be a big actor in it or a big character in the next episode i think it is yeah i don't think it's even a rumor i think but, uh, i think malcolm spellman has said that there's a character in the next episode that he'd really love to see paired up with tor apparently it's a grounded character yeah that he'd love to see kind of paired up with but i think even then people are reading too much into like he said grounded character and people are taking big guesses and it's like but that's not very grounded you know so i i i'd still i'd still kind of you know you know temporary expectations because yeah i i don't think it's going to be a as big as as people are kind of suspecting in in the last episode where i can never think i can never pronounce the name the dora dora malaja dora dora malaja uh, when they see that would have been a better fight to finish the episode on technically mm-hmm. like a super powered cap versus those guys or or like just before or to make him make him realize that they weren't even super powered and then it ends with him taking the thing or something because that was that was a, like watching those three kick the guy's asses was brilliant you know what i mean like it was so good and it was a far more interesting fight we we know who they are we know their motives yeah, like you know it could have been john trying to get zemo them trying to get zemo the last trying to kind of keep Zemo and it would have been I think a little bit of a better a better finale you know or not finale but a better way to end the episode yeah I think so you know um or just just kind of structure that in a way where we arrive at him killing the flag smasher as well you know um but but for it to not come out of the the flag smasher fight basically Yeah, but it did, the guy he killed was the guy who was just like, oh, I used to dream about yeah. Captain America as a yeah, kid. It's it's dark. Like, yeah, dark. Like, Jesus. Dark. <laughs> yeah, brutal. Yeah. Brutal. My God. It, it, was a slow, there's, there's, it was a slow episode for me and the action didn't really work for me for those reasons, but it still had those, it had enough kind of yes. big character kind of points. 
for me to work it. Even out. even there's a there's a scene where Sam just gives gives John a look and it's just like bloody hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember that? Do you? Yeah. Yeah. He just looks at him at one stage, kind of glances at him, and it's just like, oh my god, he has no respect or interest in you. Like there's so much resentment from Sam, but like obviously justifiable, you know. Yep. Yeah. Um, speaking of justifiable. Your man Wyatt Russell getting a load of bloody te death threats had to delete his Instagram. That's, That's fucking so nuts. It's, it's so stupid. It's so unreal, like unbelievable. Like, like we're supposed to dislike him for those reasons, but for then for somebody to watch an episode and then go beyond it and threaten the actor is just fucking how is that stupid. a mentality that people possess? It's like it's like uh, Emer and I watched the Circle last night and it's the finale. And it's a competition show, and it's a reality competition show in Channel 4. It's very good. Like, it's a bit of fun, you know. Uh, we enjoy it anyways. But uh, Marika, one of the girls, like, I, yeah, I would absolutely wouldn't, wouldn't play the game she played, the way she played it and stuff. But she played the game, you know. She absolutely, she didn't break the rules. She played the game. And she's received loads of views online. And it's just like, okay, if you don't like them or you don't like the character that they're playing, just drop it, you know. But when they're actually, when it's a normal person just playing a character, how, how can you make that connection? Yeah. You know, nut job. That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Honestly, that's why. Like, it's not. It, that's like there's nothing to do with his performance. And even if the Witch Soldier and Falcon was completely ruined because of his performance or his way, like it's just a TV show. Like, kind of just drop it. You know what I mean? Like, this, this is just, this, this is the thing. Like, people dislike him because he's actually doing a good job. A great, great job. job. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. but then they're, yeah, then they, you know, the show ends and they, they're still stuck in that moment. And, and even then that means that like, he's doing a really good job, you know, but then f for, but to, to, to kind of direct any of that towards the actor is absolutely insane, you know? Uh, yeah. It's awful. It's so, un it's so unfair, you know? I, I think they need, like, to set up, like kind of they need to set up social media accounts for characters and TV shows kind of now you know just so that people can direct that stuff there instead it's kind of hard it's horrible that like you know he this should be a big thing for him and the show's getting a lot of the show's the show's getting a lot of praise and he's getting a lot of praise and he's more than likely going to look back and going that was a big mistake like what was i thinking you know uh I, you know why it, it's interesting that like the whole point of it is that how he's not matching up to Steve Rogers and now effectively we have people kind of treating him like he's not matching up to Chris Evans so like the 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 storyline in the show is playing out also in real life and yeah he's going to regret it he's going to regret it in much the same way his character is going to regret it you know it's kind of it's 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 crazy you know what he's a human being I don't care you know where he comes from how much privilege or whatever you know in the sense of uh, our entitlement he grew up you know obviously very well off and stuff but it's just like it's just like he's just doing a job i don't understand how we glorify celebrities anyways just in terms of uh like like their personal life should be their personal life it should make no difference to us whatsoever like once they're on screen playing the role and playing that thing that's fine you know but um but yeah just like seeking them out like but like it just i think it's, it's just says a lot about society doesn't it it's awful but it's so so sad and like, like I, I can understand that like that there's even a term for it kind of in psychology for what happens. And like, I get that. I think it's like a kind of a parasocial relationship or something like that. And it's like, it's this phenomena that's, that's observed. And like, everyone have an experience myself where I was at electric picnic years ago and it was, yeah. Yeah. And I like, I was just watching the kind of center for James Blake before the, the show started and step backwards and I, I realized I realized just even before I turned around that I had stood on somebody's ankle somebody was lying behind me and I was like oh shit and I, I felt awful and I turned around to apologize to the person and the second I looked at their face I was like oh no fuck that guy I'm not apologizing and I turned back in my head I was like why the fuck didn't I apologize to that guy like I had to play it over my head I was like what was that and I was like oh fuck it was and it was Jack Gleason I think oh I remember the Joffrey one the, did then turn around and apologize. But uh, it's just interesting that like in the moment I was like, I'm not apologizing to him.